Hey guys, welcome to this video. Today we are gonna be learning Java Reflection by building a JSON parser like JSON. Reflection is very really powerful. It essentially throws out all the rules of Java and helps you inspect your Java elements itself. That's why it's called Reflection. It reflects on itself and it inspects its own, you know. For example, I have this class user. If you see, I have a name string, right? I can, given this class user, I can list all the properties that is given. I can list all the methods. I can list all the constructors. I can list all the uh, uh, super classes, in interfaces that it implements, all those things, right? And you can modify, call them. You can do a lot of really powerful things. So one of those things is parsing JSON into a POJO which is a very common use case. Whenever you call a REST table, you get a JSON object and you need to parse it into a POJO to work in Java, right? We use libraries like Jackson and JSON to do this. But how do they work internally? They work internally by using reflection. So we're going to be building a very bare bones example of how to use reflection to build something like this. If you guys are interested in building a production ready JSON parser with a lot of features, parsing decent raw strings and all those cool things, let me know in the comments down below and I will make a series on it. For now, I have written the code already because I don't want to waste time writing code. I will explain the code to you line by line so that you understand. I will also comment this code in GitHub and I will link the GitHub repository in the description down below so that you can go and have a look at the code also. Alright, so I have a class user which has a single property name i'll come to the annotation later it has a constructor which takes a name and it has a default private constructor i have a main function which essentially calls these two functions these two are our examples of the behavior that we're expecting to build the first is given a json string parse it into a class any class the second example is given a class parse it into a json string so if you run this right now you can see that uh gradle is running and for the first example I had a string, a JSON string, I passed it to class and I'm printing the name. It prints the name perfectly fine, straight around, right? And second example, I'm giving it an object and masking as JSON string, it's giving me JSON string, right? So this is the expect, this is the, this is the behavior that we, we want to build. I've also created a custom annotation called JSON property because they, it is a possibility that, for example, here if you see the user class has a property name, but the JSON actually has user name and we need to kind of identify it, right? So you can, I've created a custom property where you can specify, instead of using name, use username for the JSON. The way you create an annotation is by creating an interface and by create uh, adding an at symbol before the interface. These are some pro annotation that you require for the interfaces to work. Retention runtime essentially says that compilers during runtime. Target field says this annotation can only be applied on a field it cannot be applied on a method it cannot be applied on a constructor it cannot be applied on a class it can be applied on a field right inheritor is something uh just for no just think of, think of it as something that's required and i've added a function name which takes in string and this is what you pass in as property here right so this is the json property annotation now we come to the core logic okay i have comments also so we'll have two functions from json and to json let's look at from json first from json takes in a string json and a type of class right something like for example we want to parse user we pass in user dot class we'll see why we need this right. it takes in json different types of json according to the annotation or according to the property it parses the json string right so we are using a json library org dot json which will take the string and parse it into a JSON representation. Essentially, you can do dot .get field, dot .get uh, and all that, right? If Again, if you're interested in how to actually build this and how to make a really production ready uh, parser when you implement this also from scratch, let me know and I will make a series on it, right? For now, I'm using this library for simplicity. What I'm going to do is, from this class, I'm going to get the declared constructor. This will give you the default constructor of the class. All right. So you need a default constructor, otherwise this this method won't work. It will throw an error, right? If you don't, if if you have a default class, what I'm saying is this this constructor can also be private. In this example, if you see the con default constructor is private, so you can't create something with default constructor, right? But with reflection, you can. 
you just say constructed or said accessible true now this this constructor becomes accessible to you how cool is that right now you just do constructed or new instance and it gives you an instance of the class with no properties in it now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take properties from the json and put it into the instance and i've created a helper method for that i'll go into it so this takes a json object and the instance i am again getting the class type which we passed in here i could i could have just passed in the class here but just to show you how reflection can work even if you have an instance you can just do instance dot get class dot get declared fields you can essentially get the class and on the class you can say give me all the fields that i've declared now for each field i'm checking is this field annotated with json property if it's annotated this will have a value if it's not it will be null okay and uh, so now each property in our instance will have a name and a value right like for example name is the name of the property and value is like Shreeram or Prabhu for example right so I'm initializing values here so that I can set it later okay I'm checking if annotation is not null it means that I have added an annotation in the field for of the type that I've asked it to asked it for I'm checking if the annotation is not null I'm getting the name of the annotation and I'm checking if there's any property in the JSON with this key if it has I'm setting the value for that value okay this is object because now the JSON can have type string, it can have a type, let's say boolean, it can have numbers, it can have anything, right? So we're using object for it. We're now checking if name is blank or if value is none because there's a possibility that annotation was not present. There's a possibility that annotation was present, but the JSON didn't have that value, right? So to have a smart failover, what we're doing is if it's blank, if any of these is blank, then we get the name of the field and we try to get the value for that field if it's present and then we check if json has the field then we get the value right and now since we've done these both by this point i think you should have a name and value if you don't it means that if both of these run and you still have name to be blank or value to be null it means that even after checking the annotation and checking the field you have some field in your instance for which you didn't find a value in or json which is not what we expect so we throw an error if we found values then good right again now this property can be private right it might not have setters so you can say set accessible to true now you're you're saying fiend.set the syntax might be a little weird but essentially you're saying on this instance for this field set this value right on this instance for this field set this value if you don't call the set accessible true and if the value is private then you'll get an illegal access exception and this is mandatory to handle but since we've done it already it's not a problem now we do this for every field in our instance right again we're not looping through the json object we're looping through each field in the instance and we're trying to get one value for each property right and uh, once we do that we return the instance simple right it's essentially just learning some functions of the S of the reflection SDK and calling it appropriately. Again, with great power comes great responsibility. All right. So this is how from JSON work, essentially converting a JSON string to a class. Now, similarly, given a class, can we convert to a JSON string? Yeah, of course we can, right? It should be pretty intuitive now how it will work. So let's say you have a record like this person which has a property username you can either you uh, get an object with this and you give username shira or if it doesn't have the json property annotation you will use the key instead it will be named shira right so how do we do this again very similar to how we did we create an empty json object this time instead of using the string right because we have we need to construct this json we again loop through each field in the instance by doing dot get class dot get declared fields similarly we again check for the annotation if the annotation is not present if the annotation is present get the name of the annotation even if there's a possibility even if annotation is present the name is black right so that's why i will not add it in else i'm saying if name is again black I'll get with the field name. Right now, was it can be blank, but yeah, I mean, I'm not really handled it. Now, the field again can be private. I need to get the value from this particular field, right? So, I'm saying set accessible to on again. The syntax is weird, but I'm saying for this instance, for this field, give me the value. I'm getting the value in an object and I'm putting it in the JSON. Now, we do this again for every field in our class in our instance and we return the string representation of the json right 
so that's how easy it is guys deflection is a really powerful tool it can using it smartly you can create really really powerful applications for example spring boot uses a deflection extensively every annotation that you have uses reflection to help you reduce your water grip cold right so reflection when used wisely can be really really powerful so i hope this intro the reflection was helpful for you guys to understand deflection if you have any requests on further tutorials let me know down in the comments below if you have any suggestions on how i can improve my teaching skills i am new to youtube so do give me constructive feedback and i will incorporate them and see you guys in the next video bye bye